Welcome guys, welcome Dom here, welcome to today's video. And in today's video we're going to talk about what are the steps that you could take for you to adequately assess whether or not the amount of protein that you're taking is right for you and your goals. You see, there's a whole lot of rule of thumb out there about RDA or recommended daily requirements, etc., from different government bodies, etc., whether you're the States, whether you're here in Oz, it doesn't make a difference. And then there's also a corresponding view to say that that is not enough. They are the minimum standards for you and I just to be able to survive. Now, there's also lately a lot of nonsense out saying that you only need to eat this amount and that's it because the rest simply goes to waste. Now, I can bore you to flippin' tears by citing multiple different studies and da 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 and examine.com and PubMed like all the other numpties do, or I can just keep this simple. So we're gonna keep it simple. I've got my notes, let's get to it. So there are pretty much five basic steps that I like to follow, and I would encourage my clients to do the same without getting caught up looking for the lint in the navel. Number one is actually calculate what are your protein requirements. So what are you trying to do? Are you trying to just maintain? So let's think the longevity game. Are you trying to add muscle, therefore build, and therefore do you wanna go more than? Or are you a weight loss person, a fat loss person, probably more importantly, and therefore what is that target body weight? So the rule of thumb that we use here is what is the target body weight for you to try to hit and therefore on that basis go roughly because it's simple science it's one gram per pound so if i am a hundred kilo man then in pounds that's 220 and therefore i'm going to look for 220 grams of protein in a day that's not total weight of the food trust me it's a shitload more than that but that's what my goal is so i'm going to understand by calculating it that's number one and we're going to go back through these in a second step number two is we need some way to track it. So whether you are a macro counting calorie app top person or whether you are simply like, well, a fistful, that's roughly two to three ounces of whatever you're trying to think of, or if I keep my palm and open it up, that's like a chicken fillet, that's about three ounces or so on, then that's you, but you need to track it. You need to then understand the quality of your protein. Like where's your protein coming from? So. There is the, the vegan side, and there is the, let's call it the non-vegan side, which is pretty much everyone else, who are omnivores of some shape, whether it's fish, whether it is getting it from your nuts, whether it is getting it from your butters and fats, whether you're getting it from animal sources and protein, either way, assess the quality. There is better quality, and therefore you may need to eat less of it, because it's more dense as far as protein is concerned, or you go down the other path and you're eating a hell of a lot of half a jungle full of leafy greens. Number four, make adjustments as you go. Some of you will have trouble trying to hit that. We're gonna go through these in a bit more detail. Others will simply go, that's a shitload to eat, I can't do that. And the fifth one is really is monitor the progress and adapt it as you're going. Because like anything, you don't just go holus bolus into it and not adapt and navigate. It's like getting GPS and it says, do you want to avoid tolls? Then sure, take the next left. Back to the stop, calculating it. So you can use an online calculator, you talk to your nutritionist or whatever else, but there are plenty of them out there as far as your protein intake. So if I'm looking to potentially say lose weight and I want to go down from 220 pounds, I might want to drop to 190. I'm going to go with a 190 grams then. So again, a gram per pound, and that's going to give me my intake. Now. What is that in terms of total food? Why is it crucial? Because therefore I wanna eat enough for my body's needs to be able to hit that target. If I'm growing and I'm trying to add on muscle, I'm trying to get a bit bigger, because again, muscle will add weight, right? As we go through this process, the more and more I'll put on, therefore I'll need to eat a little bit more. Now, what are the benefits? Because it's gonna help us optimize that muscle growth or muscle preservation, should it be the other way that we're trying to lose a bit of weight, and therefore the fat loss and all that type of stuff, we simply manipulate that protein intake. And if it was in it, if it was one piece of advice I'd say to some people, it would be this. Trying to hit your protein intake alone in a day is freaking hard. I've just tried it over the last four or five days. I'm trying to copy my son. He actually eats a shitload more than me and he's only 17. And I've tried to eat my 220 or so grams in a day. Now that's roughly 800 
to over a thousand grams in total weight of the variety of foods, the lamb, the beef, the mince, the roast chicken, or whatever else. And all I can certainly say from me to you is, the following few days, I never shit so hard in my life. And it's simply because my body is trying to adapt to consuming that. Now, yes, I could have gone down the path and I could have simply said, right, a scoop of 100% pure whey protein, the particular brand that we actually have for my son, is about 40 grams a scoop. I could have done that, but I'm trying to do it from eating natural foods. It's also going to stop me, excuse me, got an itch, from eating other processed foods and shits and snacks and going to the cupboard. And it did for those couple of days that I tried to do it. But like all of us, we fall back into habits. And after a day or two, I went, fuck, I need a bit of a rest. Why should I track my intake? Well, it's good like a journal, an app, or whatever else. Or like you said, I might be, I might use what I simply call palm to plate. So a good fistful of veggies, for example, a good rough palm size for me at around the inch thick, that's roughly about 100 to 120, 150 grams, depending upon the type of animal protein, the chicken breast, the thigh fillets, the beef, the lamb, whatever I'm trying to get. And I know that I need to eat, say, roughly one and a half to two of them every time I eat a meal if I'm doing two to three meals a day. And if I'm eating less than that, it's a hell of a lot. It's like me sitting down and going, right, 600 grams by weight is roughly a half a chicken. That's going to get me, that's going to get me around my 150 odd grams if I'm lucky in the day. The benefits of me tracking, well, it helps me simply stay on track, helps me be more mindful of the food that I'm eating and the shit that I'm not trying to eat. And also too, it helps me understand what foods, particularly what sources of protein, are good for me and my gut. Because not everyone is the same. Some people fart more. Some people have gut distress. Some people have trouble just simply chewing. We can all eat a whole pizza, but eating two or three bland chicken breasts in front of you is a flipping hard slog. So... There's a mindset shift up here. Assessing your protein, we said a step number three. Again, considering both animal and protein sources. In other words, vegan sources as well too. We don't just do one thing. I'm not advocating carnivore. I'm not advocating vegan. I'm simply advocating that you do what you do. And for me, it's a balance of a bit of that. I do prefer something that is what we call more bioavailable, and that's the animal products. Because again, if I do that, I'm satiated means I won't then go and snack on all other shit afterwards because I am too full. Not all protein sources are created equal. Some are more, have got more essential amino acids and that's where, yep, the, the carnivore crowd comes in or those of us that are omnivores because it's better uptake, it's better utilized, it's easier broken down by the body as far as muscle repair and growth. So therefore, choosing a high quality source of protein is for you. If you're a vegan, then you're simply going to find that you're potentially going to have to eat a hell of a lot more of that greens compared to this. So for example, I'll eat 100 grams of chicken, I'm going to get about 25 to 30 grams of protein, but I might have to eat a hell of a lot more in terms of the size of a bowl of my leafy greens if I'm just doing the plant-based diet to get that same balance. Choice is simply yours, it's up to you what you want to do. Make adjustments, we said as step number four, that's simply compare your current intake to your requirements. So as you go along, you may not jump in, holy dom, I can't do the one gram per pound per day, shit, that's a hell of a lot of food, I need my body to adjust. And if that's the case, start. Start somewhere. My goal might be get from to 220 and go down, so therefore I might drop it down, but then I may initially bring it up if I'm not a big protein eater in the first place. Plan it, choose it, simply work out what your goal is, and try and get it in through a variety of ways. I don't want you to default to the easy, which is, again, I get it from a drink. I get it from a smoothie. I put in a scoop, I put 200 mils of milk and I shake it up, I can scale it down, I'm done. That's good. I can do that too. I can't do that too often because me and dairy at the moment are not in agreement with each other. So therefore, me going through the other sources, plus also too, I know I'm a dairy and I walk a lot. I already drink a gallon plus of water in a day. I'm pissing as it is every half an hour and therefore, but it's not filling up the belly as far as food that's satiating and having to be broken down. So again, I make adjustments as my go. Simply one thing is this, stay on track. If you have to track, have to track. If you need a coach to call you out, call you a little bitch because you're not doing it, then so forth. But from there, simply do that. And that final step will simply monitor the progress. Adapt it, change it, monitor, see what's going on. Don't ever be afraid. It is not just the one way. Google Maps says, 
I've got all these options. Hey, I'll take the scenic route. I'll take the high road. You take the low road. Bugger being in Scotland before you, but you know what I mean as far as monitor, oppress, adapt, change it up. Have a high carb day, a low carb day, a high protein day, a low protein day, high fat day, whatever it is, it is not necessarily the one way. If you are so disciplined and consistent that you can do that, then I'm going to congratulate you. But if you like the rest of us mere mortals, we have good days, we have off days, we have falling off the wagon days, and we have climbing the fuck back on that wagon. And let's get going. So now one of the things is this. Work out what your goal is first. Back to step one. What are you trying to do? Now, in this day and age, you'll see a lot of references to protein forward. I've even used that phrase myself, but simply because I, like many other people, do find that we are in a state where this midlife crisis is not some old dude going out and getting a hot chicky in a, in a sports car. It's that old dude is a fat bastard. He is losing his muscle. He is not doing it. He has got no general physical preparedness to do jack shit and he can't even do push-ups to save himself bend over touch his toes and find out where the wild goose goes i think our midlife crisis is one where we are struggling and muscle is one of those things the term is over fat and under muscled but protein is one thing that can actually help us maybe stem off that inevitable stuff because we want to preserve what we already have so go to it work out your goal plan it, look at the sources. If you can't do it on your own, then go and ask for help. That's it, evaluating protein. Five simple steps to how about going about doing it. Hopefully keep us on track. That is me, my name is Dom. Time for me to shut up. If you wanna know more, simply just shoot me a message. Cost nothing to chat.